All right, real talk. In the works, I am still working on my own kind of background music. We're gonna we're gonna try and get away from the copyrighted material. Uh, it's not a problem yet, but if it is, then ooh. You know what? Else? What? Uh, what's not a problem? Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on this fine. 15th of July 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been motivating. I felt like I have accomplished a lot. Let's move the mic a bit closer. I felt like I've accomplished a, a fair bit, a real fair bit of what I've really wanted to get done um, this past week. So I feel very good. Uh, unfortunately, I still haven't been able to get the, um, the QNAP DAS back. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, it seems like something's weird. Message QNAP, they said, yeah, yeah, it seems weird, send it in. And then, uh, I was talking to my store, I, I, I bought it from CPL. And their website, I would keep getting 500 style errors when I tried to contact their tech support, and I just didn't have any time this week to message them about stuff. Anyways, you're probably wondering, uh, game. You, you want to know the game, so let's get, jump right into it, shall we? Here we go. Here we go. It's a PlayStation game. Ah... Uh, this is a game that I have only played twice, and I completely forgot. Like, I played it once, in like 2020, and then I completely forgot that I even had played it. At all. Like, I just didn't remember a thing about it. And then I played it again a few uh, weeks ago, maybe maybe a month or two ago. And I remember the- well, I remembered more about it. Like, I remembered things that were in it. Uh, the movie, I think I've only ever seen once when it was kind of new. Uh, but this is a, uh, a... We're going to do a playthrough of Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet. A, uh, a Disney game, or a Disney movie, turned into a game by Magenta Software. Magenta Software is, uh... Well, I... <laughs> another game you may recognize them for is the Muppet Monster uh, Adventure. You know, that one game I played years ago. Uh... There's going to be some, uh, some cutscenes that may or may not have to disappear from the YouTube VOD again. Uh, shockingly, all of these cutscenes are in, like, narrowed 4x3, or even, this is not even 4x3, this is like 8x7. This is a bit too narrow, because the PS1's a bit narrower. But, uh, it, uh, it's sort of narrowed up. They didn't, the aspect ratio of the movie itself is kind of messed up here. The Notorious. I, I don't know really much about this, this movie other than Space Pirates. It's a pirate movie, but it's in space. And uh, it didn't do amazingly hot in the box office, I feel. They got the booty. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh... And we gotta sit through a bunch of loading screens on this game, but uh, we'll see how we go. This is gonna be a Donkey Kong Country, uh, attempt in terms of... I don't know if this is gonna take one or two streams. We'll see how it is. We got a bit of a, bit of a vibe menu here. You can change some options if you want. You know what that means. Turn on vibration. Why is that off by default? Who knows? This is, a, this is also a very late PS1 game. This is like 2002 territory. And now it's completely yeah. silent, but sure. What's that? Yep, okay, cool. You've got nothing to adjust. Let's just dive into the game, shall we? Start a new one. That's right, another cutscene. That odd little sphere. This is, spheres and circles are the perfect test for your aspect ratio, because clearly you look at this and you go, yep, that's, uh, that's egg-shaped right now. Uh, having not watched this movie, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is how you're introduced to these characters, and just dive straight into it.
It was just there the whole time. You just could have gone. You just didn't go for some reason. So I'm going to try my best. And we're going to grab everything in this game. But you will also be pleasantly shocked about the con the length of the game. Which is why I was joking oh, that this yes. may have been a one-stream game. We'll see. On the mining planet of Montresor. But then being born here, you know all that, don't you, Jim? It's not the most exciting place in the galaxy, but we all have to start somewhere. That is true. Uh, this is uh, literally the Muppet Monster Adventure kind of game engine. The camera is a bit, mm, a bit odd. You have a glide button, which is triangle, because obviously it's triangle. If you're gonna, this is this is the Spyro clone, Spyro clone. If that makes sense. Um, unlike Muppet Monster Adventure, we don't have to deal with backtracking. We also have right analog stick control. You can look left and right. With the analog stick, although it's uh, not really analog, but it's just you know, in case you don't have the, uh, the L2 R2 buttons, uh, there's a lot of like weird little ledges here and there that you'll kind of navigate around. But uh, we'll find these. Uh, oh, 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 down I go. Goodbye, life. Okay, I should be double jumping, shouldn't I? Oh, there's a strange sound when you double jump as well. <laughs> what a strange sound. Now, Jim. Barrels are designed to resist damage from being bumped about, so you'll have to zap them to open them. Uh, sure, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you got a sword that doesn't break these barrels. You got a laser that shoots like two centimeters in front of you, uh, and that's about it. That's all you get. Uh, there is a <laughs> wonderful global percentage meter as you hit L1 as well, and there's quite a few things on screen here. But... Treasure chests are armored. The only way to open them is by combining brute force and a big, sharp object like your sword for instance yeah that's right laser that, the laser resistance so uh just like spyro which uh this is inevitably based off of you know it's like a charge in your flame except uh it's not really a charge it's a it's just a sword attack um but yeah uh but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll try i'll try my best to grab everything in this game i don't think there's anything too hidden but, uh, you never know. You never know. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, I can't really say too much about, like, my personal connection to this. Because it just kind of exists. And, I, you know, I've sort of gone through most of the games that I've really grew up with. So these start to become games where it's, like, out of curiosity or out of, you know, whatever I'm, I'm playing them. Um, lots of coins. I don't know how many coins are off the top of my head in each level. Uh, it might be different for each level, but it's a it's a Looks nice like whole number, a which is always good. In the immediate vicinity. That may open it right up. Oh, if only there was something right here that I could zap that would open this gate. Wow. Very, very nice. Very, very nice, fellas. Aren't these game designers wonderful? <laughs> you can give me the Bubsy quotes right here. Nah, but I, I rip on them, but I did think Muppet Monster Adventure was good. I think my real only gripes with this game is how, you know, much of the same game it is. Also, this thing right here. Oh, Jim. My dad left me in charge of the scrapyard. And there's some ugly old birds stealing spare parts. Can you help me? Please? Uh... Ethan, yeah, sure. <laughs> thank you, Ethan, for popping the mic. There we go. Uh, this game has, uh, mini games as well. Oh, you read this, by the way? That's right. It's it's literally we gotta Three, we gotta get a score we gotta do it we, we'll get there one, get we're getting there now we're good move your crosshair spam circle and hope for the best that's not too bad other than <laughs> the uh, shocking amount of input delay going on but uh it's, a, it's it's not a particularly hard game in in lots of ways but uh. I think it's interesting because it's like, well, okay, it's a late PS1 game. What exactly are the design sensibilities? I think this game came out just in like the same month, maybe. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to be completely wrong. Certainly the same year as Ratchet and Clank. And I think if you're looking at, oh, what are the Spyro devs interested in? Well, you know, this kind of stuff. Little mini games, stuff involving just like, you know, the characters doing stuff. Shooting galleries, other kinds of... We'll see other kinds of minigames throughout the game as well. Uh, oh, just 
that was a wonderful music loop, I hope you heard that. And the music's fine, but it's a little unremarkable, it's like, oh yes, pirate music, okay. I feel like that's, uh, partially the, the sound font is a bit, you know, I've been there, done that, I guess. Maybe I've heard too many things using it. Oh, is he gonna, okay, I was like, is he gonna say something? You did it, thank you. Here, um, I wanted to have this. You know, for helping me. My dad told me that they help spacers get between planets. And if you collect enough, you might be able to explore cool new worlds. Yes. So... Yeah! Oh my... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> You're gonna need these tokens in order to continue the game. Uh, there's a, a number of them. I guess. We'll, we'll see. We'll judge. Uh, but... There's nothing really too hidden again in this game. It's pretty it's pretty normal, it's pretty ordinary. Is that just like an indicator? I'm I'm just like reminding myself, is that was that an indicator just to say like hi yes you can indeed climb this? Sure, okay, so. Uh pretty much the only I think object that you're gonna be like, oh, okay. Um uh, there's gonna be some chests kind of high up on ledges. You probably saw one just up there. Uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll address that in a few minutes' time. Um, also, his neck posture. Ugh. Give yourselves a posture check if you're at home. You're sitting uncomfy. Posture check right now. Another cylindrical object is perfectly within your capabilities. To start climbing, simply jump onto the object. On a pole, you can climb up, slide down, and shimmy around. To get down, simply jump at any time. But remember. High velocity impact with the ground is detrimental to your health. And we have full damage, because why not? I keep thinking red means it's gonna like explode on me, but uh it doesn't. <laughs> That's right, it's another mechanism that is literally the same thing. It even spins in the No, it's spinning in the opposite direction, isn't it? No, it's the same direction. Come on, guys, come on! <laughs> But yeah, you can see there's a barrel up there that's just, mm, it's a bit awkward to get to, so we'll address that in a hot second. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to grow into this game too much for being, it's not bad, it's just kind of you will find that you can climb preposterously and short and not great value. To start climbing, simply jump onto the object. Well, I guess it attempts what it's doing alright, so... Actually, I'm curious who's the uh, musician on this one, who's the composer, because uh, I've probably heard a fair bit about what he's done. If you stand on one of those pads, then you'll charge up your plasma musket. Thank you. What do you do when you charge up your plasma musket? You hit L1, and you can start shooting, and uh, you can probably shoot some things that have boxes on high ledges. Uh, you can end- oh, sorry, did I say L R1? L1? It's R1. <laughs> um, you can walk around with this, you get, you know, some schmeckens at the bottom to wing it with. Um, but it's mostly there just to shoot things on high ledges and or... ...jumping off things, because I'm a dummy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little annoying because it's like, oh, you're going for 100%. And you're gonna just encounter that. You're gonna you're gonna encounter because the reason why they're teaching you there's the music loop again. The reason why they're teaching you about this mechanic is that you're gonna have to use it to sometimes open up boxes, uh, not necessarily these high ledge ones, but definitely other kinds of boxes that are uh, otherwise, you know, impervious to your attack. So I think this one's a perfect example. Nope, never mind. I heard a story that before he died, a pirate flint hid four journals somewhere in the galaxy. They're about his adventure and the special engine for his ship. Each What's the odds this is the sound director's son? There's a lot of cases where this is this is a uh, true thing. By the way, did you did you hear that? There's four pieces, four diaries, because there's four levels in this game. That is the shock. That is the like, oh, are you kidding me? Really? In other words, smash the daylights out of them with an overhead sword attack. Oh, it's not resist. It's, it's, it's not resistant because I need the fancy thing. It's just a jump attack. There you go. One out of six. So the six pieces in a level, but then, yeah, there's only four levels in this game. 
which is shockingly low. It's, it's like, wow, because Muppet Monster Adventure, the levels weren't quite as big, but there were like 18 levels, not counting the boss levels. Uh, this game has four of these levels. It has four um, what we'll call skateboarding levels, comes up later, and there's two boss fights. Uh, which kind of immediately makes it seem like it's only got half the amount of content of Muppet Monster Adventure and relative, <laughs> related Spyro games, and the answer is, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it kind of does. You see that, by the way? There's another box on a ledge. Don't be distracted by things that are far away. They don't exist. <laughs> um, but yeah. Hopefully this will be a bit of a chill time, and it's not like uh, Dr. Brain, where I literally can't talk because uh, I'm in such deep thought. Um, <laughs> no, it'll be nice and chill. And hey, I've already pirate themed my avatar, and it wasn't specifically... <laughs> that really looks like you can jump that as well. Uh, not specifically because of this, I was just like, ah, I just want a pirate avatar. But, uh... Yeah, okay, so what are we doing? We are needing to shoot... That's a box. That's a box, excuse me. There we go, and all the spoil spell on the floor. You can see there's another barrel on the high ledge there, so you're gonna... We're gonna need to make sure that we're ready for that. I... I... Yeah, I was like, I don't suppose I can hit that from here. We're gonna hit that from here. Alright, let's get our spoils and then have a good lineup. Or even better if I can just hit it from right here. Maybe I can. Might be alright. I think that box is on a ledge. That's okay though. Oh well. So, I feel bad for sometimes, like, kind of crapping on some of these games because it's like someone, someone out there is going to be like, Oh no, I grew up on this game. And I completely get that. And also, again, it's not, it's not really bad game. It's just gonna be short. That's really it. Um, but hey, you know, enough about talking about it short. I think uh, there's one thing uh, that I can say, and that's uh, I'm gonna get interrupted by some dialogue again. You will discover that certain objects are light enough for you to push around. If you walk up to an object and attempt to push it, you may succeed in moving the object. But remember, Jim, you are not an irresistible force. Some objects are quite stubborn and may just not move. Uh, they didn't really tell you about the uh, sliding marks, the skid marks on the ground, which is uh, you tell that you can push things. Pretty strong for pushing that, though, I'll tell you that. My power core. Oh, but <laughs> wow, that was a bit of a tight ledge, though, ain't it? Also, yeah, did you notice I, I lost a whole life by dropping off a ledge? It's a bit cruel, but there's also not a ton of points in the game where this happens, so... The mechanism for this door appears to be missing a standard power diode. Oh, good thing it's standardized in the galaxy. You bring it back, the door should work perfectly. It's like the gear grinders levels, you know? Yeah. Uh... But speaking of uh, nostalgia and other, other kinds of ports, uh, I would like to make mention of uh, a recent port uh, that appeared on Steam. It was the 20th anniversary re-release of Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, released for 30 Australians, so probably 20 US dollars. It's a port. It has, I think it's got 60 FPS compatibility, although I don't know if the original was like that. Maybe it's got a higher refresh rate? I'm not too sure as well. Um, definitely 4K support for output. Nice, okay. Um, that's kind of it. I don't think there's really any extra content in the game itself. It just kind of, you know, it's a it's a port, it's whatever. Um, but Beyond Good and Evil is clearly a game that was being sold up to this day. It didn't have any, you know, like, licensing like some other games that get re-releases have to go through where it's like, oh, you know, like, they don't necessarily own everything that's in the, uh, in the game, so, you know. They have to relicense it, and sometimes you just can't relicense it. I get that. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil is not one of those games. Let's see, that's like the most cheeky like spot up there. there go, I think I got it. So. Pretty 
No, no, that's not a. That's okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll jump there from another avenue. Oh, that's the rope. That's the pole. Never mind. The pole? I don't know. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil is not one of those games that really required relicensing. Pretty much up until the point there was a 20th anniversary release. This interruption. Local inhabitants call a death slide. A death slide. If you jump on, you'll slide along wherever it takes you. However, make one wrong move and you may plummet off the course entirely. Wow. <laughs> bit, uh, bit dramatic there, eh? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Beyond Good and Evil is not one of those games. There is not particularly a great reason why you cannot buy the original version of Beyond Good and Evil the moment they release a enhanced version. Now, we've seen tons of enhanced versions of games over time. I think the absolute best case is when both versions are for sale or even bonus points, when the new one doesn't really cost that much and you get the old version inside it. I think Quake and uh, Quake 2, the 2021 and the 2023 ports, great job because the originals are in there and both games are 10 US dollars, 15 Australian. Um, maybe you could argue, oh, okay, they were a little cheaper um, when they were sold on their own. I'd make the argument 10 bucks. You know, it's, it's, it's low enough and also the sale prices are pretty good anyways. So, you know, we're doing all right here. Remember, Jim, not everything is visible to the naked eye. Keep your wits about you and keep on the lookout for signs oh of Oh my gosh, areas signs of secret secrets. areas. So, uh, yeah, take a, take a crack. Ah, oh, pun. Just secret area. Shoot it. Area, area. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's going to be a couple of these kinds of walls in the game. So, uh, I'm going to cry if I forget to spot one. Because sometimes it's a little hard to notice here and there. Uh, you're gonna need some money in the game because, uh, sometimes people are jerks, and I think every level is like this. When someone's gonna ask for some money. Oh. No one is to enter the mine unless they are a miner or an official union member. But, if you really want to go in, I can probably let you into the union for 100 rubles. Hmm? Yeah, um, that's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Here's the hundred drabloons for my union initiation fee. I'm so glad that this is a voice of dialogue that exists. Welcome to the interstellar union of miners. You will find that many doors Miners are is a very, you. very tragic Including homonym. This one. I'm very certain this is the only door that you're ever going to open with this membership as well. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. He's out of here. Now, there's obviously more level. Um, this kind of reminds me of a, like, Magma Cone from Spyro 2. It's probably the, like, everything all makes sense uh, kind of thing. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be wondering what those little red things are. From what I can tell, you have four hit points, and then you collect multiple little red things to eventually build up a hit point. Hello there, boyo. You look like you could use a lift. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's also my job to operate the machinery for the main lift to the mine down below. Would you like to use it? You know, the lift. The lift? Yeah, sure, I'll use the lift. I'll use the lift. Makes sense. It's almost like a loading screen, but I'm very certain that uh, it's all loaded in. Mm. Maybe render-wise, it hasn't loaded in. It's a bit long, though. You don't you don't need like to wait that long in order to move assets around. But sure, okay. One thing I kind of like about this game. Hey, we'll give it some praise. Uh, colored lighting. It's nice and orange right here. Suddenly, very blue. You know, it may be a PS1 game, but given that it's so late in the cycle, they do have a lot of modern sensibilities to them. So these green lights over here, very nice. Own a genuine relic of nautical history. Deposit your credit crystals in exchange for a piece of treasure from the hoard of the notorious Captain Flint. Wow. So uh, if you got four crystals, and there's only four crystals on the level, so. I'm sorry, you don't have enough credit crystals to receive a souvenir. Done. Oh well. Guess I'll have to come back later. So yeah, just, just know that's gonna be that. 
Uh, and that that uh, percentage of like how far you are to the game, that's gonna that's gonna keep going up uh, from every single coin and every single like bit. Every single thing is required. Ooh, stretchy bridge. Um, but yeah, I I believe that that's you know the best kind of remastering. I I do legitimately think there's not really a great reason why hey I can't have an older version of the game when it is like, you know, that's it. Say I want mod support, or maybe I want, you know, like, there's cut content, or, or uh, just I want to see what the original version was like, you know, wrestler in all of its glory. I feel like that's a very, very nice bonus to include with games, or, you, you know what I mean? There's not really a, a reason why you can't have the original in there. Um, at least in that case. Uh, if it involves licensing, it's like, I get it more, I don't, agree with it. I feel like, you know, hey, I should be able to sell the game in perpetuity. I don't really know why I can't. Why why, why are licensing deals like this? Who knows? Um, hey, one day we'll come across an enemy in this level, right? Just what I needed. Check out this lad right here. Mine's been overrun by bandits, and they're trying to destroy the generators. If they succeed, we'll all be trapped down here. Can you help us? You got it. I'll help stop the bandits and defend those generators. <laughs> it was like, oh gosh, I got a second line in there. Uh, well, at least we got a, an excuse for some combat. Oh my gosh, only you can stop them. And they've opened the gates. We must... Stop the bandits, I guess. So there's five generators, let's bring them back online. Uh, but yeah. Beyond Good and Evil, removing the original- Oh, hold on. These bruisers have portable energy shields that will deflect any shots you make. I suggest you take your sword and pursue a more, shall we say, up close and personal approach. Okay, the enemies in this game are kind of annoying, though. You're gonna come up to this guy and he shoots you. He's already taking shots at you, I'm like, eh. Why would you, why would you forsake me like that? They do give you a lot of free lives, so I'll tell you that. This is just literally the gear grinder, like, fellas. It was holding on to the power, it was right there. It was right there. I've been running around. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, there's obviously even more egregious ones. I think the uh, the Grand Theft Auto remaster for the uh, original trilogy, okay, the GTA 3 games, you know, 3 Vice City, San Andreas. That one's really egregious because it's sold as a full price game. I know you get all three, and I know they're also big games. It's not trivial work. <laughs> but, uh, oh my gosh. That much money? And they're only like half price. You know, you still gotta spend 45 bucks for games that have been on larger sales. Lower starting prices, larger discounts. I don't know why you gotta spend that much, but it really breaks my heart every time I see that. Because it's just like, why, is there any reason why the original version or the, oh my gosh, it's coming at me. Why the original version or even the updated for the 10th anniversary version that they forced upon users of the original games. <laughs> Like, is there any reason why I can't have that version? No. Okay, then. And it's not even in those cases where it's like, oh, maybe they are, like, ashamed of some old content. It's like, I don't think anyone is exactly proud of the new art style compared to the original one. I don't know. I, I, I think the original is the better style here. Why is it full damage when you also have a Clyde button? Like, the only punishment... So the only like use case for punishing your falling is if you know you just don't want to land. It's a bit perilous, ain't it? I've never been on like a rickety platform like that, but I, I don't really want to. And also, hooray! A bit of a time waste platform. <laughs> what a time waste ledge! Time for a posture check. Look at this guy's posture. Don't be like him. I'm 
pretty sure they got the original voice actors on this one though. So, very nice job. You're just gonna wait for him to come at you. But yeah, no. This uh, this was contextualized in the Steam sale as well. I found it a bit tricky to like really know what I even wanted in it. I was just like, yep, these are definitely games and quite a bunch of the time inferior versions of some games like that Beyond Good and Evil. I fortunately do own the original. I don't have any intention to buy it again. And it's a bit of a shame that it's like, hey, we put in the effort to make a upgraded version, which granted, it's really only the PC that gets like that caught out. Other consoles, it's like, well, either you're going to be running an emulated version in the end, or they put in this effort and they actually do one of these fancier editions, which I don't mind the effort, and I honestly don't mind, you know, hey, you know, re resell a game and reintroduce it for a, a new audience without exactly compromising, you know, don't compromise that much. If it's like, oh, you know, the controls need to be wrestled a little bit. Like the, uh, what's a good example? Um, like the Spyro Reignited Trilogy um, on the, uh, the the Your Doom section. The controls are a little more analogous to a, uh, a third-person shooter with Twin Sick on the Reignited version compared to the original where it was a bit more shoulder shoulder button, uh, you know, mapped. And I'm like, that's fine because that's, you know, more people are used to the newer stuff and that's okay. Oh, God. Come at me. Come at me. There you go. The wrong button. I used the wrong button. The wrong button at the wrong time. Can make all the difference in the world. And it did just then. I wonder if this way. Ow. Ow. Just what I was oh, that's all my movie. That's all the movie. I don't know what's the percentage I'm looking for here. We're just kind of hoping for a nice whole number of doubloons. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's like four the tokens, I think. I think. I mean, we'll definitely know if I'm, like, way off, though. Open the gate! There we go. Yeah. Inevitably, I did pick up a couple of games. I picked up uh, Creeper World 4, which I really, really love Creeper World 3. And I found the first one to be quite uh, enticing as well. The second one hey, is alright. Like, uh, for its price, hey, it's fine. There you go. You found all the hidden pages from the channel on this Pizza Planet token. <laughs> I love these, like, platforms just out in space right here. I guess we're all in space, technically, but, like... You know what I mean? It's like, there is nothing else holding these here. This is just... Bubsy 3D, literally a platformer kind of moment. In fact, actually, this whole, like, ledge here, I'm like, woo. Quite amazing. It's like a radioactive driller right here. Uh... But yeah, uh, I picked up yeah a bunch of MotoGP games because I don't mind Milestones games for their price. For the discounts, hey, I'm okay with that. They're not perfect, but they're alright. They're good fun. Um, and the Hot Wheels game, I think, is actually like pretty alright. Not amazing, pretty alright. Uh, I've picked up everything, haven't I? Because this is another ledge, and I, you can guarantee it's probably going to walk me back, ain't it? Oh, look at that, walk me back. You did it! You saved us! Oh, now that the lift's working, we can all get out of the mine. As a token of our gratitude, please, take this. Have a we token. found it hidden in the mine. Well, I mean, where else would you find it? Yeah, I got okay. enough treasure to open up the next level. The next it's level! It's my responsibility to operate this here lift system. Are you wanting to take a ride on the lift? Yeah, sure, I'll yeah, use sure, the lift. Sure, I'll use the lift. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, we're pretty much here at the end of the level. It's not a... Yeah, that's what I mean. None of these levels are... Like, they're big. There's a, there's a fair bit of stuff to do in it. But when there's only four of them, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, side note. Uh, the, the, last, the last of those yellow diamonds just hiding right there. Uh, I'm 
hoping... It's a bit of an odd amount of treasure. 189. Yeah, 189 is a bit of an odd number. I think I'm going to have to give a bit of a, uh, a peruse. And uh, of course, there's a natural Ooh, bit of backtracking. Yeah, sure, I'll use yeah, the sure, lift. lift. There's a natural bit of backtracking going on. I should probably have a thing just to know how many things are in the level, just so I don't, just so I don't, you know, miss out on myself. Oh, and my search is just not working. It's not having a fun time. My syrup, C-Rex. Search X and G. I don't know how you say it. Uh, it's just, it's not having a fun time for the moment. Dang it. Can't believe it. Oh well. Um, I have to rely on the Google. Uh, so let's talk about topic number two, which is a uh, uh, it's a controversial topic, I guess. Controversial in the sense of it does relate to current politics. But I promise I am not gonna devolve into a uh, really that much relating to a uh, specific uh, scenario um, for the advertisers and uh, for the advertisers. I, I, barely, relic I don't get history. that much money Deposit from advertising. It doesn't really matter. For a piece of treasure from the hoard of the notorious Captain Flint. Captain Flint. Oh my gosh. Thank you, valued customer. Here's your genuine piece of treasure. Actually, I think there's a PS2 Certified version of this game. It's a different game as well. Authentic. So here we go, we got this. Yeah! So I'm very certain there's a perfect number of 300 treasure. I'm gonna have to spend my time like, just kind of walking back until I go, ah, I missed this one chest. Although 189 is a very odd number, ain't it? I do have a complete save, but it's a bit too late to like, try and find out. It doesn't take too long to walk back, but still. Well, we just open up the long play, I guess. There you go. Oh, don't don't have audio from the long play. <laughs> In sight, don't do it. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the control t uh, the con uh, look, uh, there's a chest by the way. You see what I mean? It's just like it's so easy to just miss that. Uh, the controversial topic at play is uh, for the people who uh, follow United States politics. Uh, there was a certain very, very serious moment that happened, uh, on, uh, Saturday, uh, America time. It would have been Sunday morning. Rain is falling for me. Um, it was pretty, it was, it was decently early in the morning, but not early enough that you wouldn't be able to catch it. Um, and, uh, that moment definitely is a big wake-up call reminder. Uh, I definitely, I follow enough people to go, ah, yes, you know, like this definitely was theorized um, not uh, not uh like no one wishes it upon anyone i want to highlight this no one wishes terrible things or oh, sorry not no one not a lot of people and the people who do this is where i go you know that it kind of loses you know what i mean like i i think this goes you know both ways or always if you start having Lots and lots of different sides and po politics stuff. And obviously, it's very easy to go, other side is dumb, other side is stupid and dummy, because they don't see what I see. And that's like, you know, the most obvious thing in the world. Like, oh my gosh, why, you, what, why don't you believe this? Oh my gosh. Um, or like, why do you think, like, you know, we solve the world's problems like this? Are you silly? Are you stupid? And I completely get that, you know, Sometimes it's like, hey, yeah, you know, like, this is a serious topic to me. Please, 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 like, don't simplify it down or don't, like, boil it down to this. I need this. Like, I get that. I completely get that. Politics, ideally, is everyone agrees on what needs to be done, but just disagree on how to accomplish it. You know what I mean? Oh, there's the, there's the box up there as well. Um, that's so obvious when I'm, like, looking for them, isn't it? Uh... But at the end of the day, uh, not at the end of the day, the, 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 the thing I want to specifically point out is that uh, um, I'm a person who observes Twitter, I look at it, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Um, 
I don't really say stuff on Twitter. I keep saying that. Um, but is looking at it bad enough? Maybe. Um, and uh, Twitter is certainly a site where there are a, are a bunch of silly billies. Oh, there's a, there it is. Okay, we didn't spend too long here. That's 200. It's it's five of the little token things, uh, and we've already got the, the maps and the, the stuff. So there we go. Levels all, all done. We can leave now. Um, but what I want to highlight is uh, particular opinions. I'm not going to single out individuals, but I will certainly say that a lot of these people are either high profile or high, uh, the botting traffic. I don't know. I, botting traffic doesn't necessarily mean it's them, but it does highlight them. And I want I want to say that you know, like that's a, a problem, I guess, with the platform is like, hey, sometimes people get sort of targeted and, and singled out. Um, really, though. What I want is that, hey, if someone has a terrible opinion, like a real, real terrible one, like, you know, the kinds of ones that I'm about to uh, indirectly mention, that's like, hey, you know, that should be grounds for change. Not grounds for, you know, cancelling all this stuff. You know, people can have terrible opinions and hey, in the context of Twitter, like, honestly, it really doesn't mean much. No one should be taking Twitter that seriously. Hello, There's a lot of fun conspiracy you. theories you if you look around. Like you uh, the sure space you, as well. Um, you'll find lots of the theories about how this uh, this event was fake in various ways. I found like five different reasons. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I don't know. The most likely explanation is probably the simplest one. A very disgruntled person went, this is the only option. And it's clearly not, but they're disgruntled. That's what they, they thought. They're wrong. They're a loser. End of story. Glad, like, tragedy that, you know, some people lost their lives. Um, but glad that, you know, whatever they were attempting to accomplish didn't get accomplished with that. And now we can have the conversation, well not now, but like we can use this as another example of going, yeah, this is why you don't do that. This is why, this is why you don't commit terrorism, guys. It doesn't do what you, what you want it to do, really. It's my responsibility to operate this. Yeah, sure, I'll use the lift. Uh, I know I'm grossly oversimplifying and I think there's a very, uh, you know, like... I think there's a deeper conversation and certainly one where, hey, you know, I can, I can come up with a hypothetical situation where you can somehow justify anything. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Also, it's the end of the level. Hi there. Oh no, the pirates have taken over. So, Jim, have we finished our adventures in the sunny town of Benbo? Isn't Benbo that one game? That called themselves Team Fortress 3 for a hot second on Steam? Do you want to save the game? I guess, in case my computer blows up. I have to go that whole level without saving. There we go, here's my complete save. I ran out of lives, I was going real gutsy on the lives. Save completed. And that's it, that's that level. To the next level. Every single planet has a race level. The race levels have uh, a shortcut scene at the beginning where you sail around. There's a bit of continuity, you might be wondering at what point does this happen? This seems like a happens at the very beginning of the movie kind of thing. Where it's like, let's introduce our rebellious character who has an earring. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, this is what I mean by there's a, a skateboarding level, kind of. It's not really skateboarding, but uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, and effectively, uh, this level involves Three, going forward. I think it's holding forward, right? It's not holding X, is it? It's holding X. Oh, you go around, you pick up time because you need to get more time. And you fall down a pit and you lose a whole life because uh, you've forgotten the jump button is R1. Uh, there are six laps, but one thing I do like is that different laps will wall off different uh, kind of parts of the track. You'll see that we're turning right here. Um, in a future lap, we'll turn left and we'll see more stuff. Uh, and that gives you different opportunities to collect, uh, you know, these bonuses, these items and these coins and stuff like that. And you can take damage. How very, very nice. Um, I'll try my best to pick up all the goodies. Uh, but unfortunately, the tokens, the actual, like, kind of pirate token things that you need in order to continue on. Not necessarily to continue on from this level in particular, but you need so many in order to unlock other levels. Um, all three of them are based on the actual 
end time you get. Uh, so I'll sometimes miss and I'll be like, yeah, I'll try again next next lap, you know what I mean? Um, some of these are just mean though, I'll tell you that. Or like, you're really not looking at them. <laughs> they just, just kind of go straight past you. Uh, but you don't really need every single stopwatch and again, it's like, it's based on your end time, so... If I'm godlike, I will get this all in one go, but uh, I don't think I'm that good. So, it'll probably take me two goes. I should probably pick up one of these clocks at some point, but... Uh, but yeah, so the opinions I want to uh, put forth are honestly, like... Mm, they're, they're too blunt and brutal and tribalistic in the sense of... Uh, I want my candidate to win. Understandable. And I absolutely hate the guts out of my opponent so much that I wish that terrible things happened to them. Not understandable. That's bad. You don't- don't ask for that. I know I'm saying it in like real like, you know... Uh, <laughs> kinda like, I'm, I, don't, I don't try to introduce like incredibly strong or harsh language, but I'm just like, man, you know, like... It's so nearsighted. It is so incredibly nearsighted. But that's every single uh, one of these uh, cash cash dollar dollars as well, right there. Also, you can tell it stacks between levels, so so that one that one amount of money that I had at the very beginning of the level, hey, you know, it's sorry the the extra two hundred I had from the last level carry over, which is unimportant for this level. Actually, I think can you do this? I don't I don't think you can. Oh. I should double check if you can actually leave the first level and then do this level first. <laughs> I'd be curious if you could. Uh, there's a part of me that appreciates that uh, every level has... Sorry, every world has one of these. It's a regular level and uh, one of these levels. So definitely there's a... You know, they were proud of it enough to use it a fair bit. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, the unfortunate opinions involve, yes, uh, you know, this person missed, which is, come on guys, really? Uh, I saw some real horrendous ones of, uh, the people in the crowd were, uh, mm, deserving? Oh, that's, like, come on, man, you know, the, the crowd has nothing to do with your opinions, bro. Here we go, here's my time. I don't think I got this. We'll see. Oh, nah, I probably didn't. I think it's 3.30 for the gold. Yeah, okay. So we're going to have to just try it again. And it's purely because I slowed down ever so slightly. I can show you the world. Well, not at that point yet. <laughs> That's a different game, which I didn't play today. Um, but yeah. Now, why am I bringing up politics? Well, one... I do follow a bunch of people who talk about politics, and I think it's important to note, like, especially now, I sure do hope that nothing exceeds the uh, severity of this recent moment. And I know it's US politics, and I know, um, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago the Mexico election, I'm like, man, so many candidates, so many candidates getting the, you know, getting the, uh, what's the term? The... Get axed off, we'll just say that. And it's like, man, you know, like, it really shouldn't be like that. Um, I don't know enough to exactly explain that in countries that I just don't follow. I apologize, but, uh, you know, I, I, at least from an outside perspective, I just go, like, clearly that's not right. Let's retrace the steps, and then also just, you know, somehow, somehow I hope that I can, you know, somewhat inspire change, even if, uh, I'm just a voice on the internet who plays video games. Like, really? Is it the, really the platform for that? I don't know. But I hope that you as viewers, um, you know, like, not not saying you have to go out and be activists. But certainly, I sure hope that, uh, you know, I think we can all agree, A, you know, make it a fair bout. May the best ideas, the best opinions, and the best, you know, presentation of the candidate win, you know? I don't, I, I don't think that there's anything, you know, gained by 
uh, demonizing and vilifying the uh, the opponents. I mean, yeah, sure, like, I totally have a, a clear preference in my mind as well. I definitely have a clear preference. Does that mean that the other side is not valid for the time that they're in? Uh, as long as the election seems fair. And uh, based on my understanding of US politics and US election, I at least look at the, here's the actual politics take I'm gonna have. I, I look at the 2020 election and I go, well, you know, whatever malpractices I did see, I don't think there was anything enough to throw the outcome of the whole election in doubt, if that makes sense. I think that certainly it's upsetting to see that there's malpractice, to see that like, hey, you know, like, some ballots are pr were probably faked. Some, like, people definitely didn't do their jobs, you know, collecting the things properly, they left out some, they included some that were, you know, erroneous. There's a lot of that. Um, and I do believe there should be more and more scrutiny, certainly. Did any of that mean a change in the outcome? I don't, I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Um, and certainly for the few months afterwards, I can completely get why people were riled up if you, if you didn't think that was the case. Um, from that point on, I'm just like, hey, you know, worst you can do is go, hey, beat them next time, you know? Come back strong. That's, that's, that's how you win. That's how you win, uh, well, I guess, sorry, that's not how you win politics. That's how, <laughs> that's how you should be winning politics. Obviously, all's fair in love and war, and this is definitely war, right? You know, so, apparently, apparently everything's on the table. Freaking, you know, you say, say terrible things about your opponent, you throw the kitchen sink, I know a lot of people have reservations about um, the use of um, extra government resources. I guess we'll say. Um, so certainly, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I think a lot of people can say. But at a very surface level, I I feel like a hey, you know clean clean fair debates, popularity of ideas, presentation of candidate. Whether you trust the candidate, whether you trust the the like not even just the president himself um but also like the kind of people that you know he's going to be talking about bringing in um because the cabinet is all self-elected by the president i believe and uh you know supreme court picks i think same boat uh to the next level to the spaceport to another 300 goldies to the spaceport it's like half halo and the aspect ratio again it's a killer there's something kind of neat like man it's been years like actual decades since i've seen this movie but and and for the people on youtube i apologize because you're probably not seeing any of this but there's something neat about uh this is the part of the scene where they zoom in on the moon and it's actually the spaceport and it's a big uh cgi like like just 3d um kind of model of just things going on and then they just kind of 2d animate some like characters here and there and there's something about, like, the early 2000s where they did integrate, uh, kind of 3D animation quite a fair bit in works. It's a little bit jarring because you can fairly easily tell the difference. But I think there's something also charming about how they clearly wanted to do 3D animation or 3D modeling, at least, as... Jim. I'm off to buy some provisions like for our an extension of animation and so it didn't push for realism in the same way as sake, uh, some other 3D animation was at the time. I'll meet you at the mooring flag for our ship, the RLS Legacy. Legacy. And there he goes. He's gone. So. Hey, more pirate music. See what I mean? It's like, it, has the music changed the beat? I don't know. But it's another level. We'll have a, we'll have a good go going about it. And yeah, we'll see how we go. Because uh, I mean, we're already at 54 minutes and... Uh, we might... Yeah, we'll see how we go. Because the other two actual levels are about all the same length. I don't think any level is particularly longer or shorter than the others. And I don't want to make it a four-hour stream. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Anyway, so main reason why I, bring, why I want to bring it up is uh, certain, yeah, certain content creators, especially ones uh, in, you know... Mm, you know, the, the, the streaming space, the let's playing space, the VTubing space. You know, we're all we're all tangentially connected. We all have a similar purpose and a similar demographic and a similar market. And uh, 
Mm, when people go a bit harsh on the uh, person deserved or person should have or that kind of stuff, I'm like, man, I don't think anyone ever really should be wishing for that kind of stuff. Um, one might say, hey, you know, is it your place to talk about politics? And uh, certainly some creators I follow do talk about politics, and some don't. And uh, for me, I dabble in it without really uh, calling it out too directly, because I'm not that kind of guy. I really don't like, you know, like singling out people. I think a lot of people are ripe for re ripe. Uh, a lot, a lot of people should be able to be redeemed, even if like some of the things that are being said are like really reprehensible. Like, oh my gosh, man, I really don't agree with some of that. Uh, but does that necessarily mean? Oh, there we go. I do like a good grab box here. Um, but does that mean that this person can't understand that they're wrong? No, like clear, clearly anyone, a lot of, in fact, actually a lot of people, I think there's some creators, uh, you know, you might watch their sub counts and you go, oh geez, like, you know, they're popular enough that people actively watch them and then actively were like, ooh, that's a bit, that's a bit of a yikes take. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave them and that's it. Hello there. Uh, uh, can you help me, young man? I need to buy some rat traps, but if I leave here, then the space rats will eat all of my fruit. Can you guard my stall for me? Uh, sure. No problem. I'll help you. What is it with rats? Space rats seems very fancy, so... Three. Yeah, again, again, these minigames give me a very Spyro 2 and Spyro Year of the Dragon vibes. Oh, this is a camera angle and a half, ain't it? Whoa, it's tipping and rocking. Very fun ways. Those are indeed rats. Hey, I'll give props. The particle effects are pretty neat. Things vaporize in a nice little red mist, and even, uh, you know, the, the morph character keeps dancing behind like these sparks, and it doesn't really do much because your health is not represented by morph, but. Hey, you know, he's kind of neat. It's like, hey, for a PS1 game, that's kind of exactly as I would have expected. And yeah, yeah, you know, like, just, just to go back to this game for a hot second. Yeah, the, like, nothing about this game is really wrong. Really bad. I think it is just more like, yeah, you know, like, that first whole tutorial level that barely had enemies was a quarter of the platforming stuff of the game. It's lengthy-ish, but, you know, you feel like you're kind of still getting the ropes, because things just take their time in this game. Oh, you're really handy with that laser. Take this, and my thanks for guarding my stall so well. Thank you, my man. I shall take your Pizza Planet token and continue on and shout very loudly, apparently. Gotta watch out for the, these rumbas, I tell ya. You can't even deal with them, it's like, what? It's like, well, what am I dealing with there? So we'll just, we'll just ignore the rumbas. I think it's only this level as well that has them. Hey, you know, props for having different enemies on... Oh. Time to not shoot enemies that shoot at you, I guess. Um, props to them for having, I think, different enemies in every single level, but uh, four levels, man. <laughs> Just saying, Spyro 2 also did that and I had a few more levels. Look at this guy wandering around. I can never tell what you can jump on and what you can't, so. Uh, but yeah, no, if you if you see someone okay, uh, yeah, so if you see someone who says stuff that's like charged, and I'm not saying like, oh please cancel them, that kind of stuff. But what I, what I am saying is, like, I think people should, one, generally, they like, cool off with the charge stuff. Like, hey, you know, I, I don't care really what you believe in, who you follow, all that stuff. As long as you're, you know, like, if you're decently, well, I don't really care. So if you, even if you're not open-minded, it's like, hey, you know, you can enjoy my content all you want. I don't mind. Um, I would like for people to be open-minded. I would definitely like that. I would... Uh, really, really, really be like, hey, you know, if you if you share a similar worldview to me, that's, you know, really neat, I guess. I guess. I don't know if I really want the whole world to think the way I do. 
That's the thing, it's like, if there was a room of ten of you, would you get work done ten times faster? And if it's like, you say yes, then it's like, oh boy, okay, like, very confident there. Uh, but if you say no, then clearly it's like, you know, there's a degree of disagreeable... A degree of disagreeableness, what a, what a phrase. Um, can I get that, or is it gonna hit the... I think it's hitting the wall. Yeah, okay. This is tough as well, because you can see there's some barrels on the far side of this room as well. And the worst part, all of them will drop out onto the floor. He's blocking with his hammer. There's one there, and I believe there's one... Oh, we'll just go for that one, I guess. I think that's it. I don't think there was one underneath me. I'd be a little shocked if there was. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Alright. But... Yeah, I'm like... Just, uh, you, you know, you know, I don't, I don't wish harm on anyone. I'm like, hey, you know, even these people, even these people with the terrible takes, hey, I hope they realize the errors of their ways, and I hope that, you know, audience members may or may not redeem them. I certainly do agree that not everyone is gonna feel that way. Some people are gonna be like, hey, you know, enough's enough, that's it. You cross the line, Sunny. J yeah, you see, there it is. There's those barrels right there. Like you can't even see those from down here, for, or from like where you're at. You've got to basically grab the grab the green laser, come around, and then you can get it. So I got to drop to the floor again. All for that hundred percent. That's just on screen at all times. That's really like no incentive for me to do this as well. But it's just like, hey, I got to show it. I got to show it. I guess. Come on, man. I gotta hit that, right? There you go. Uh, so I guess same rules apply. 300 coins, which uh, puts me at... Um... 650? I'll probably have to spend some in the middle of the level, so... Uh, but yeah, no, that's it. Now, I would leave that as as the, the politics topic. I think that's, that's pretty much all I'd have to say. Just don't be so charged. Um, hopefully people can be redeemed if they said terrible stuff. And if you did say terrible stuff, hey, you know, don't double down. You don't have to double down if you actually realize that, like, yeah, you're a bit wrong. Um, obviously, there's going to be people who won't see your reply. That's a problem with the internet. I completely get that. But the more you, you know, like, not saying ap apologize for everything. Like, obviously, if it's like, hey, you know, if you do believe one thing, hey, you know, like, whatever, man, stick to, stick to your guns, I guess. I don't know. There are some things that I just don't like. Like, that's it. I don't know. That's it. <laughs> my, to my topic isn't really that deep. I'm like, eh, it's just, it's just whatever. You know, that's not fair. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not here to change the world. I'm just here to, to you know, inspire and uh, be good myself. That's it. And for some reason, talk about election fraud. Oh boy. <laughs> Ugh. Ain't no election fraud happening. This, this is Treasure Planet. We're pirates. Arr. We're pirates today. Uh, so what do you do here? I'm pretty sure that yeah, the, down here on the sides. There's some fairly large receptors for some electric batteries, but sure, okay. Uh, so let's hit topic number three. Topic number three is one that I think some people are tired of hearing because uh, it barely develops, and we still don't have an outcome. Uh, that is, of course, the classic, the Intel processor, uh, instability kinds of stuff. Uh, so let's give a timeline of events. Uh, sometime, I think, November or October 2022, I forgot the month, I'm sorry, and it's gonna be the same thing for the other ones. Uh, this was when the Intel 13th Gen processors launch. Intel usually releases their processors starting with the K-SKUs of the 13600, the 13700, and the 13900. Now, these processors, uh, were based on the Raptor Lake architecture, which is sort of an evolutionary, their, uh, their talk, uh, you know, evolution over the older lake processes. They've got P cores and E cores, uh, performance cores and efficiency cores. That's those. That's what that means. Um, and generally, all of these processes kind of have high-ish power targets. Um, they release very close uh, timeline-wise to 
the Ryzen uh, 7000 Zen 4 processors. They were very close in release to those. Uh, the top end one, the 7950X, uh, it's about the same in like Cinebench, whether you think Cinebench is an apt comparison, who knows? And, uh, but uh, also the power target, like at the top end, the 7950X would go very, very close to a fairly high 220, 250 sometimes power, uh, you know, target, I guess. Uh, obviously, with enough testing, I think a lot of people did, uh, did realize that uh, if you control for power, no matter what power level you pick, the Ryzen will win. The Intel just likes to draw more power in the end. This is a very odd platform section here as well. Can I grab these and come back? Yes, because it goes up, maybe. Or it goes across. Um, but yeah, no matter how you slice it, the AMD processor draws less power uh, for the same amount of work, or does more work for the same amount of power. Um, so it's more power efficient, pretty much at all points. You can control the power, uh, the power limit, you'll get a better result than the Intel processor. Does that mean the Intel processor is without use? No, because uh, the Intel processor, you can slam it with power and it will love that. It's also, it loves faster memory. The memory control on Raptor Lake was shockingly good for its time. It's like, man, you know, like DDR5 just came out, like, a, like not, actually, yeah, kind of a year ago. Like it was a year before that in 2021. Um, Older Lake, it was optional. Raptor Lake, it's optional. You can still get DDR4 motherboards. Uh, Zen 4 that just came out was the first gen that required it and DDR5 was still it's a bit expensive But here's Raptor Lake just going hey, you know like the the base spec DDR4 or DDR5 was 4800 mega transfers Raptor Lake was like hey, we can do 5600 native and a lot of people realized you could probably do 7200 no sweat on pretty much any processor um, Already we're hitting crazy good clock speeds. So that's great uh there was also the, the, you know, potential that you could actually overclock Raptor Lake up to 6 gigahertz if you somehow kept the thing very cool. Uh, this was made a bit easier by 14th Gen. 14th Gen came out the year after. Um, and uh, unfortunately for 14th Gen, it was actually meant to be a brand new architecture called Media Lake. But unfortunately, it seemed that Intel, uh, based on speculation and reports, couldn't really get it to scale as well as they wanted it to. Um, it could sort of maybe only fill out like i5 processors and who knows how well it would have done at that. Uh, so Intel went, hey, you know what? The gamers want a good processor. We're gonna just do better bin versions of Raptor Lake. Introduced the 14th gen desktop processors uh, near the end of 2023, named Raptor Lake Refresh. It literally was Raptor Lake Refresh. There really isn't anything more to say about that other than A, the process is ever so slightly better, and the processors, the processors, are 100 megahertz faster. Sometimes 200. But yeah, no, not that much. Uh, the one thing you did get is that, is that uh, for the i7 they decided to put 12 E cores on it instead of the 8 that was on the 13th gen processor. That's your one difference. But architecturally, there's nothing really that much different about it. It's kind of just the normal. Um, I bought a 13900KF, and for reference, f skew processors are ones where the integrated graphics doesn't work. Um, usually it's, it doesn't work, uh, not, it never had it to begin with, it's more just, it's its own thing. Look at this, like, guy flying around there. Um, I don't suppose I passed a barrel on the way, no, I think it's, I'm looking at that, which I can't see as well. That's lovely. This is a shocking lack of time you get to, like, jump off this, look back, aim and shoot the barrel. Oh. We got it, we got it, but I didn't get the one behind me, so I'm gonna still need to walk back. That's okay, that's that's fine. Um, also, yeah, actually, yeah, the, the amount of just waiting you gotta do on here just to get the, the stuff. Uh, for reference, that area over there, that's the beginning of the level. Hey, I like me a good bit of, you know, um, what's the term? Not necessarily backtracking, but just highlighting that, like, you know, the level keeps going. The level exists in uh, a bit more depth than just a straight line. And uh, hey, this, this game does okay with that. Not amazing, but it's okay. Even if the levels are, you know, you can tell the straight lines. You can tell they're not going anywhere in particular. Um, 
But yeah, so I bought a 3900KF in January of 2023. That means that I've owned my 3900KF for about 18 months. Uh, at the time, uh, it was insanely good clocking. It was like real, oh sorry, not clocking, in Cinebench, it was really, really good. And Cinebench is not necessarily my work on because I don't 3D render things on the processor really that much, actually, at all. Um, my main workloads, I'd probably say, is video encoding. One, because, hey, you know, I, I, I'm a guy on Twitch. Most people, if you watch videos, most likely your person is going to do video encoding. Does that relate to you as a, a, as a consumer? You're going to have to judge for yourself, but you are disproportionately going to hear about that. Um, I do also do a lot of file compression, uh, and uh, I also do a lot of... Um, uh, What's the one? Well, I, uh, I guess video encoding, but I use FMMPEG, which is a, another program. But you can real slam your process with FMMPEG. I use that as my, you know, like my best kind of stability test, because that is generally what I'm going to hammer my processor with the hardest. Um, and out of the box, I couldn't run FMMPEG. Uh, I would get just instability. FMMPEG itself would crash. Uh, it would just, whatever. I wouldn't get system crashes. But I would certainly get just a... Some programs just did not like the processor, day one. So shortly afterwards, I dropped the power limits down quite a lot. And that, yeah, that did all right. Hey, it's a lift. It's my responsibility to operate this here lift system. Are you wanting to take a ride on the lift? Yeah, sure, I'll use the lift. Hooray, we got, we got another one. We got another lift. Woo! And then the lighting goes weird. Maybe they just hard teleport everything into the new room. So that the light, you know, the light... Oh my gosh, with the door open immediately. Okay, sure. Um, so, yeah, so I introduced the power limit. I just said 253 watts, which made sense for me. I live in Australia. Australia gets very hot in the summer. So when I got it, it was fairly toasty. It's like, hey, you know, I've really got to put in some effort in order to... Not burn my process. Hey, laddie, I have a shipment of fruit that I need to unload for market. I have a Some shipment of fruit that I need to unload. If you That's help not me his fill accent. Up a few barrels, I'll pay you what I can. Will you help me unload? Uh, I'm helping him unload. Oh no. No problem. I'll help you. I'll help you. Okay. Uh, this is a kind of odd mini game. You gotta just lean left and right, and you'll catch things. Catch the good stuff. Don't catch the rotten stuff, or else you die in real life. There is a significant delay, by the way. Like, hold on. Left. Release. Right. Tadna. Left. It's... There's a weird delay on everything, so... If you see me miss some things, I apologize, but that's just because there is a weird delay. It's, it's harder than the actual, like, game itself. If you play the game, you'll feel it. You'll really feel it. You'll be like, oh. And he's, he's a real pirate with this... Oh, whoops. Based on that leaning. Takes its time though. The worst part as well, you, you get there's another mini game later in the game that's just exactly this. I'm not sure if this pattern is actually like hard fix. Someone I should probably compare with that long play, see if it's exactly the same. That'd be a fun exercise for the reader. Um But yeah, after dropping the power limits, my processor seemed alright. Um like, that was pretty much it. That's really all I did. Uh, I didn't really address anything else. Oh, I turned off multi-core enhancement. I thought that was, like, usually a source of instability as well. So my processor runs a, a bit more standard. Multi-core enhancement effectively just adds 100 megahertz to every single core, which I'm like, I don't know if I trust this one to run quite the, the best with that. It's fast enough Thank already for my, need, for my needs. I so. haven't got a lot. But here's some treasure I found some on my last treasure I down. found. Oh my gosh, man. The whole treasure right there. Yeah! Look at all these buildings that don't have doors. Jumpy, jumpy. 
There you go. So, uh, yeah, that was, um... That's kind of it, I feel. That's, that's really all I can say. Um, the power limit seems to do its job. Um, about a couple of months ago, I got a contact frame. I got the Thermal Right contact frame. The cheaper one? Not the Thermal Grizzly, but the Thermal Right one. Uh, I think I've used some other Thermal Right products. Actually, I'm not sure if I have, but I really do want to get a... The... Not necessarily I want to get a Peerless Assassin. I've got an HD 15 cooler, so I don't really need a Peerless Assassin. Okay, by the way, this area is just like, no, nah, this, this area can go die in a fire. Hit the switch. This causes this platform to change. Uh, you're going to see me hit this quite a few times. Because, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. And also this guy right here, man. He's vibing, he's spinning. This is what I mean. You gotta go over here to hit the switch, which allows you to go up here, okay? But notice how there's barrels on a high ledge on my side of the, the canyon here. You've gotta basically switch the fl flicky switch back so you can go over to the other side. And then eventually you're gonna have to switch it back and forth just to grab the coins one last time. It just adds time. Like, oh my gosh, jeez. Um... But yeah, uh, I got the contact frame, and I found the contact frame definitely did help quite a fair bit. I was dropping my system's temperature by a uh, good five, seven degrees. Part of it was uh, my thermal paste application kind of sucked the first time, and I just didn't take it off. It was a year. I think a year is a decent amount of time to assume your your uh, thermal paste application works. Um, but yeah, no, it was pretty shocking the first time, so... Um, or it just evaporated like it actually properly dried out uh, I don't suppose there's a high ledge around here we'll just double check I guess yeah, at least you can step on it and reset your timer uh ooh, ooh. I always double guess it uh no we don't might as well shoot this guy um but yeah uh, that allowed me to increase the power limits a bit so I increased them a little bit, only to realize, oh, I'm getting the instability again. And this was around the time that all these uh, Intel rumors had happened of the uh, instability. So I sort of knew, okay, I knew I should have set the current limit, which was completely unlocked. It was like 700 amps. I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing was occasionally pumping 700 amps into the processor. That's not good. Um, so I dropped that down to 380 amps seems to be the limit I can reliably use. Um, this is again just FMMPEG stability. This is not like most programs work fine, but FMMPEG was my litmus test. I knew that FMMPEG was not liking, you know, a lot of the default stuff. But at 380 amps it seemed alright, and uh, it didn't compromise the performance. Uh, like I was, I, I mentioned to the bench the very, very raw number I had was 40,000 um, when I ran with just the complete motherboard defaults. What I had before, with the power limit set down, started to make it 36,000, 36,500. Um, it's currently 37. And I think that's fair. That's kind of about on average. Some people have colder rooms. They're just going to be more likely to run it better. Um, and obviously, as well, the averages are going to be off-skewed by people absolutely cranking the heck out of their processor. But I'm like, eh, it's a good score for me. It's a good score for me. And it's doing what I need it to. Like... Uh, I, I particularly, you know, spam single core. That seems to be a, a lot of... Like, I know FMMPEG can really use all your cores pretty well, but there's a bunch of other programs around where it's like, yep, I'm doing something computationally expensive, and it's single core because it ain't written for multiple cores. Barrels. Everyone loves barrels. It didn't happen. Didn't even have to stop. Perfectly timed. Uh, but yeah. So, introduce around February. This was around the time I think Oodle Game Tools uh, gave an announcement. Uh, there were a bunch of people going, Hey, I I'm trying to run this game. It's on Unreal 5, and I seem to have this running out of VRAM error. It's basically on NVIDIA GPUs. A lot of people then blamed NVIDIA for having real low amounts of VRAM on the GPUs. NVIDIA said, Nah, not us. Uh, people looked into it. They then thought, Oh, well, it must be the software that's erroring. Oodle looked into it and said, The software has been around for ages. It's kind of weird for it to suddenly now be erroring, and uh, eventually people 
and sort of dissected that it was to do specifically with Intel's newer processors. It seemed that Raptor Lake, sorry, Alder Lake, Intel 12th Gen, and on top of that, uh, 13th and 14th Gen processors that are not based on Raptor Lake. So, for reference, uh, the non-K uh, 13th Gen CPUs are all, sorry, not the non-K, the non-K how do I phrase it? The the uh the, the non-K i5s and i3s. Actually, the i3s are not K anyways, but the non-K i5s. So the 13400, the 13500, and the 13600. Not the 13600K, mind you, are all based on Alder Lake. Actually, I think there might be revisions that can you know complicate that as well. So that's fun. Um, but the 13700 non-K is indeed Raptor Lake. Same thing with the 13900. For uh, Raptor Lake refresh, 14th gen. I believe the 14600 non-K is Raptor Lake, but then the 14400 and 14500 uh, back to Holy Lake again. Confusing, I know, it's confusing. Uh, but uh, th yeah, anyway, point is, those ones running on Alder Lake seem more fine. They're not, I, I love how I can only go up to nine lives, by the way. I don't know why no one remembers Magenta. It's because I can't count higher than nine. Uh, but yeah, I, a bunch of these, like, newer processors, sorry, the, specifically Raptor Lake were the ones experiencing these errors. And so people were going, oh, well, you know, like, what seems to be the problem? And I think an easy problem people immediately spotted was the motherboards ran very intensive. And, uh, myself included, I ran up the opinion for quite a while that, uh, these motherboards were running intense. And anecdotally, I can definitely point to myself as being like, hey, yeah, like, it seems to be the case. I dropped the stuff on my processor. It seemed to run fine. Maybe not as good as if you ran it completely unhinged, but also I could actually run programs. I, I consider that to be fine. Um, certainly, I think a lot of people should asterisk the 13900K and you know, 14900K and benchmark results and go, hi, yes, uh, does this pass this one test but doesn't run FMmpeg? Maybe that's a problem. Um, because definitely, what's the point in a processor that wins one benchmark when I can't win a use case that you would legitimately have? Certainly, that's that's a thing. Um, but uh, dropping the motherboard settings just a little bit mm, seems okay. That being said, some people think that they experience degradation. And that makes sense when your processor was drawing insane amounts of current and voltage. And, you know, when the power limit was 4,095 watts, like it is on basically every single motherboard I've seen. So many of them didn't default to anything normal. They were like, nope, go full ham. In fact, actually, some of them do underclocks by default. The load line calibration is set such that it's technically undervolting the processor, which means that's actually safe in terms of you're not killing the processor by doing that. You're just inherently writing the line close to where it's going to be unstable. And that's, uh, that's going to be a bit of a doozy. That's a bit of a doozy, so... I feel like at this level, it just kind of keeps going on. It's like, oh my gosh, there's another room full of dudes. We're technically in the second area, and it kind of just still looks like the first area, but we're almost at the end of this level, I, I, I can tell you that, so... I do agree, this is probably going to be too long for one single stream. So. I'll, 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 I'll wrap it up a bit sooner than later. It's been a while since I've done a shorter stream, eh? Maybe I sh should find some, like, cutting room floor concept to pad the time. I love barrels. More barrels. Um, oh yeah. Uh... So the, so the idea was, people didn't really know if it was the processors degrading, which some people were fighting over that that was the case, and uh, whether it was the motherboards just being really hard on them by default, causing people's motherboards to, or processors to decay. Chicken and egg. What, what exactly caused the processors to, to degrade? Is it them running too hard out of the box? Or is it the processors themselves always being bad? Mm, it's hard to know. Intel themselves, tried to blame the motherboard manufacturers. They went, hey, yeah, you know, you're not doing recommended guidance. Please fix that. This then led to a rush of BIOSes releasing what is known as the Intel Baseline Defaults, which was not sanctioned by Intel at all. 
It, that's a fun one. Lots of motherboards. Even, mm, maybe not to this day. I think a lot of them have fixed this, but, uh, released a slew of BIOS updates calling themselves Intel baseline defaults. And Intel didn't set these specs. They were sort of arbitrarily picked somewhere within Intel specs, mind you, but not really the specs. Actually, no, they're not the specs because they ran the the, uh, the voltage so insanely high. It was still like 1.7 volts on some gigabyte boards, which makes me think that some of those boards may have been killing the processors more than what they were before anyways. Like, if you set the current really low, but then you set the, the voltage really high because you have a higher power limit, you are just... Inherently, like, burning the chip. Yeah, I got an the next level. I'm pretty sure I'm writing it so close to unlocking the final level, by the way. It's very easy to just immediately jump into that. I think we're done with this room. I'm at 600 gold on the dot, which seems like a nice whole number, but I'm pretty sure there's another 50 in the level. Yeah, okay. It definitely keeps going on for just a tad bit longer. Gates of Delirium right here. Oh, yeah, you gotta spend your money. Hold it, son. Only guild members and visitors with inspection papers get in. However, I could arrange a temporary guild membership for, say, 200 drubloons. 200? Oh, my gosh. Here's my 200 drubloons for the, um, <clears throat> temporary guild membership. Ouch. Greetings, ah, my ears. <laughs> guild member, and welcome to the warehouse. I, I have been invited into a warehouse. Nice. It's not even a house. It's outside. What? It's a space warehouse. Ooh. All right. This is the uh, proven point of whether I got everything. Well, I definitely got all that. I'd say we're looking pretty good. That's going to move the, the platform the other way. So let's get all the goods here. Yeah, I mean, we've got all the movie stuff. Lots of, lots of boxes up here. This might look promising enough. And if not, hooray, more backtracking. I can guarantee level 3 is full of, like, easy, easy to miss things you need to backtrack for. So, level 3, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, man. So, anyway. No one knew. Do you blame Intel? Do you blame the motherboards? Who knows? Myself, I blame the motherboards. I think I've had in the past saying, I oh, you know, it's the motherboards. It's running so aggressive. That is everything in the level, I think. Is it? Yeah, geez. Okay. Wow. Okay. Easy. Easy stuff. Very easy stuff. I'm just looking at a wall, just making sure the long player is like, yeah, do I have the same amount of tokens? I do. We're good. We actually <laughs> managed to end it up pretty pretty good. Don't worry, we still got the, the, the skateboard well, level hello, and the boss fight. Shall we venture on board the legacy? Or would you like to explore the docks a while longer? Nah, I'm good, bro. I'm good, bro. Wow, that went smooth, didn't it? Yeah. Jeez. Easy money. What is that? Is that fewer tokens in this level? No, it's just five. I just <laughs> didn't count it. Uh, okay, we got to do the boss first. It's boss time first. So obviously at some point he's on a ship and then a spider guy. Oh, they got him with the stinky line. Got him. I'd be terrified if there were, like, aliens that were, like, you know, could literally lift me up, like, that high off the ground. Because I'm like, oh, boy, like... I could be killed physically quite easily. Maybe accidentally. 
All right, with the space rock unloading facility as this puzzle group is going to throw as much as we whatever you possibly can avoid what he throws at you. But if any grenades are thrown your way, throw them back before they explode. If he jumps over to attack you and his initial avoid his initial leap, and then try to hit or shoot him while he's on the floor. They just explain the whole boss fight to you, man. So what do you got to do? You avoid the barrels. He grabbed you in the cutscene, and now he's just throwing barrels at you. But look, a grenade. Yeet. There you go. He takes quite a fair bit of hits. Uh, both of the bosses do. Uh, if you're playing on retro achievements, have fun. Try to do these without taking hits. It's actually not that bad. It's actually fairly ordinary. Because I mean, hey, you know, these barrels are... You know, just a fairly, a fairly clean, you know, visual cue. And hey, these guys do okay boss fights. Now you can see how the rules go. The timing for getting the, the grenade is a bit a bit precarious, but it's alright. Throw that towards um, that. Oops. There you go. I super broke the retro achievement. Sorry, man. I've been spending all this time um, just playing Gran Turismo on the retro achievement, so I don't really have much to say about like what I've been playing. Um, oh, now he's throwing big barrels. Big boxes. Um... But I'll probably be done with Gran Turismo this week. Ooh, hi. Oh yeah, he stole your sword as well, so you just kind of throwing your arm there. I guess you gotta laser him. I should now jump towards the center. Ow! Hey, it's not that bad though. But hey, you know what? I'll rip into this game, but hey, it's a, it's a, it's an alright boss fight. It's an alright boss fight. It goes for long enough. Uh, you can die right at the last hit, just to be very sad. I remember when I said, like, oh, these boss fights are easy, and then, yay. Um, gives me more time to talk about the Intel thing. So, point is, uh, the recent development from uh, Wendell of Level 1 Tex, um, who I do enjoy uh, a lot of his insights and... Uh, um, the Level 1 show, good, good time laughing about the world, and our inevitable demise of uh, robots taking over everything and people making silly decisions. Uh, very, very fun. Um, but uh, I think there's lots of cool stuff in tech, so he talks about a lot of good things. But he uh, released a video saying Intel has a lot of problems. And uh, in the video, uh, he sort of said kind of just all, you know, all what I said. Um, and for reference, we still have no clue about the, um, the Intel like, you know, these are the processors and the motherboard, who knows. Um, but this video did highlight uh, something new, which is uh, a use case for these Intel processors. The desktop processors in particular. It's kind of annoying, you kind of get chain hit there. Um, uh, a use case for these Intel processors is for game servers. The game servers want to have the best single core. So they go, hey, you know, Intel Core i9, that's it. And they'll be on these workstation boards, W680, uh, maybe not W790, there's newer workstation boards. Um, but there's definitely like, hey, you know, there, there is a workstation board you can get. The common sentiment, you may believe, just, just, <laughs> I got picked on by a guy with a laser sword. Oh, my laser's on a laser beam, and he threw grenades at me. Well, that was a that was a boss fight. That was one out of two boss fights. I hope you enjoyed it, because, uh, two boss fights. Well, we got a spaceport race, and then, uh, oh, the stream's done, I guess. Uh, this is literally the same scene as before. It's, it's not on the space. It says, ha, 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 but if your mum was watching you do that, she'd be a bit terrified, eh? Everyone likes it when the police hate you for having fun. No fun allowed. But yeah, same rules apply, but uh, hopefully the level is a bit more involved. He's like sitting on an invisible chair. The people who can do like wakeboarding, not wakeboarding, wind sailing. You know, lots of like impressive 
you know, upper body strength on that one. That's beyond my, uh, you know, I, I, I can never achieve that. There's also turbo boost, because why not? And touching walls hurts you, because also, why not? Stuff you, that's why. I do like the different paths that you go on this one. Whoops. Unless you can do that, then it's, you know, a bit moot. Uh, but yeah, uh, so you would, you would imagine that these workstation boards would be designed for stability. Uh, the answer is, um, not all of them. And I think the, uh, the easy thing to point to is, uh, that element on Intel baseline profiles that, you know, aren't even Intel's own guidance. Um, but it's like, okay, they just put them in there just to, you know, ensure that, uh, the motherboards aren't going extra. It's a bit odd to see W680 boards announce, hey, we're introducing Intel baseline profiles so that you don't overclock your processors. It's like, does that imply you were overclocking? And the answer is yes on some boards. The Asus boards, yes. And that's, uh, that's a bit of a like, oh, okay. Like, you know, we still have no idea that. We actually would have no idea if I am losing so much time, because when you fall off, you gotta go back to a checkpoint. For some reason, it's like weirdly far back. Like, I'm still on lap two for some reason. And I keep missing those coins in particular. Nice. Right on that clock real thin, that's that's blinking hard, so I probably say this is the trickiest level to actually get the coins, because they're like weirdly around like kind of odd corners that don't quite look like you can just land it. And they got these like turbo boosts that throw you off, you're like, uh oh. I gotta get that one. Ah, oh, and the coins are on the inside as well. Almost got all the coins. We're almost there, We're almost good. I've not gotten those movie tokens though, I tell ya. Okay, well there's one there. Whoops, missed it because there were coins. Sorry, gang. Um, but yeah. Now, the other big bombshell out of Wendell's video is that uh, he said that uh, he's been talking to some game to those game studios about like well how many of the processes are how many of your game crashes are there and it's not necessarily that like the the crashes are sorry the number of crash reports means that like the number of those processes failing but rather just out of all the issues that they have to investigate what happens if you try grouping by processor what they found was a sh what he found was a shocking number where based on the two companies data sets and he can't share the data sets because obviously there's a you know, identifying information and it's internal game data. It's like, hey, it's not necessarily something that, like, they want to be disclosing themselves. Uh, later on, you know, sometimes they did, though. It's not like some companies actually did come out. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back just for that. I'm already stuffed for time, so... Am I gonna get the other... No, the other, the other clip is, uh... Well, I gotta take another crack and get that one clip, but it should be good. Nowhere near the time. The number of times I fell off was way too bad. So, um, so the shocking parts was uh, for one game studio, 80% of the game crashes were related to just specifically the recent Intel Core i9s, like just the Raptor Lake ones. Um, you had a decent mix of both 13th and, and 14th gen. Um, decent mix of the KFs. The KSs didn't appear as much. But that's also because fewer people have the S's. Like, I don't know who's getting those, man. I swear. It's a bit overkill. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. Uh, on top of that, one of the studios said that, like, out of all the Intel processors they got 
they had to basically say 50% of them were defective enough that they couldn't use them. And one of the studios, I believe, either it was, um, no, it was, it was some dino survival game. I'm sorry, I forgot. Literally, the headline of the article I read said, Dino Survival Game Developer, not the, you know, the name of the studio or the name of the game. They're just like, no, Dino Game. Okay, so I apologize. I don't know the name off the, off the top of my head. But I'm not a journalist, and I'm playing Treasure Planet at the same time. <laughs> please, please give me an excuse there. Um, uh, but yeah, they said, we're going to be selling off our Intel processors, and we really want to just move to all Ryzen's now. Um, like they're saying that uh, the Warframe developers, so is this Digital Extremes? Maybe. Um, is saying, yeah, like 80% of our crashes are also Intel i9s in particular. Um, and on top of that, as a bit of a deep dive as well, we don't know Motherboard by the way. We have no idea, like maybe some of them have some ideas about Motherboard settings, but not all of them. And not, not enough to pull out any trends just yet. But certainly, by processor, these kinds of errors come up way more on these Intel Core i9s. Um, and, uh, and shockingly, in the data set, you can find uh, like other Raptor Lake processors like the Intel Core i7 13700T weirdly shows up there. The 13700T, the T indicates, this is a 35 watt part. This is intended for, like, slim, like, like thin clients. Like little Dell Optiplex workstations. Things that won't be able to have enough cooling, and really, 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 really should run out of the box with a very low power setting. And yet somehow they also experience the problem. Which is like, okay, well, that was, that was kind of a bit fine, that, that ledge. Did I do it all right for time? I felt good. Yeah, 226. I felt good. Was that the time I needed? I wasn't even paying to... Yeah, yeah, we should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. So the Intel processors that should be running at a low power level and still have the problems. Where does the degradation lie in? And... To that, we still have an unknown. We still have no idea. Um, but the degradation is definitely there. Not every processor is affected. I seem to be lucky. Some reviewers are lucky. Um, we're not going to move on to the next level. I think, I think we're, we're done for the stream. Yeah, you see what I mean, by the way? I've already unlocked the final boss fight. And you need 18 tokens in order to face the final race, which beats the, the game. So in theory, I could just do this race level and I'm, I'm set, man. Like, I, I'm actually set at that point. I think there's I think there's tokens in the final race level as well, but it's like, what's the point? Oh, I'm sorry, the point is it's time. That's the point, yeah. Um, so yeah, so just to finish up with the, um, with the, the, the thing. So yeah, some processes are definitely degrading. How much? No one knows. Some processes like mine, are still fine. Like, I've... I can't personally say I've had a problem, but I think I'm seeing too many reports of people having problems where, okay, yeah, it's tough to recommend. On top of that, we are in July. Zen 5 is bound to release this month. Uh, based on the rumors, I think you should start seeing uh, reviews, maybe, for... Uh, uh, Arrow Lake, Intel 2nd Gen, we're back to, we've, we've refreshed the numbering, we're back to 200s now. Um, probably October as a general release, reviews may be earlier, engineering samples may be by August, which is in a month's time. Um, so certainly, we're close enough to a new generation that, A, you know, you probably won't need to think about buying Raptor Lake very much. Zen 5 on paper looks like there's a lot of stuff under the hood, but I also don't think that like it's really manifesting as like anything too different other than just general uplift. Generally, oh, my process is a bit better. Um, and honestly, going safe with your architecture is quite fine, quite an understandable position. Um, I'm pretty confident Zen 5 will beat Raptor Lake single core. So your use cases of getting Raptor Lake diminish a bit, 
I think if you have a very particular use case, you're probably going to be unfazed by all this. You're like, I have to get Raptor Lake. That's fine. Whatever. Um, and, and, and as someone who uses Raptor Lake, it's like, hey, you know, like, I, I get I get it. I completely get it. Um, I also do hope that Arrow Lake is significantly better. I am very, very, very hopeful of the uplift in the E-Core performance. Because I think that will be the very, very big, like, hi, yes, this is... This is an important thing. This, this menu music, this is the same as the other song. It has that terrible loop. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. But if Intel, you know, if you're going to release a new processor in three months' time, and you've had five months so far of this other problem, and you still don't know why, people are going to have a lot of questions. And a lot of people are not going to trust Intel when they release their new processors. Maybe by the next generation, and certainly, you gotta be in the know. If you d never bought an Intel processor and you don't look at Reddit or technology news, you probably don't know. So I'm not gonna say it's like, oh, it's dead in the water because people don't trust Intel. But the DIY market is gonna know. And, and I think that's significant enough, enough that they're gonna see and they're gonna be like, mm, we gotta fix that. We gotta somehow make these people who bought Intel 13th gen and 14th gen go, huh, yeah, you're like, let's stop bl blaming the motherboard manufacturers and instead just go, we're going to solve your problem. Even if they don't necessarily know why. I think it's just unfortunate that at the current moment they don't have anything better to replace it with. Imagine buying a 4900K and then like the best thing that you could somehow get for reliability has to come back to a 12900K. You lose 8 of your E cores, your single cores is reduced because you got the uh, I forgot the name of the P-Core generation, but whatever, it's that. Um, man, we got so close without a bot, I swear. We were so darn close. Um, but, uh, but yeah, nah, I, I, I mean, uh, it's, it's a rough situation. I think, uh, certainly when people go like, ah, oh, but AMD had, had stuff. It was like, yeah, but it didn't affect a ton of people and it didn't last very long. Like, we figured it out quick. And it was resolved, and a lot of people got replacements, and then we're good there. Uh, is it bad that it happened? Yes, it is bad. Uh, motherboards really shouldn't be running things crazy over spec. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, every single one, but uh, in my case, gigabyte, definitely gigabyte. I can, I can attest to that. Um, but from my opinion, I think it's a combination of so many problems. I think. One, Intel doesn't give the doesn't make their guidelines strict enough. Motherboards are gonna do whatever. Two, motherboards go overboard with what their whatever. They are gonna they run the the currents so darn high by default on some boards. I am shocked that Intel lets them do that. Like I think Intel just doesn't know. Um, adjusting load light calibration as well is a well. It doesn't hurt the processor, but certainly why? Why is that literal like? measurement of what your board can do somehow changing between BIOS revisions. I don't know why. So there's a lot of unknown with that. Um, Intel themselves, there is apparently degradation and that is perhaps a problem some people are saying is with Intel 10 nanometer, although I, again, why is it not on Arbor Lake? Um, perhaps why is it not on mobile chips? I don't know. I think there's a lot of questions there. Is it necessarily the power limits? I think it contributes. Is it necessarily the current? I think it contributes. Is it the voltage? I think it contributes. And I think some perfect storm of everything is causing this to happen. If you reduce some of it, you will dodge the problem. And I think in my case, I drew, I drop, I don't run the voltage insane. I think I'm like 1.3 most of the time. Um, and my current, I've limited to 380 uh, amps. And my power is generally like a byproduct of both of those, and it's not too high. And I think I've generally avoided the problems because I've been doing that for the most part, like pretty much the whole time. Either having a power limit set kind of lowish, or uh, having the current there. Um, I think definitely people should try to fix things themselves. Like just turn down some settings, see what works, see what gives you the best results while still being stable. And perhaps your chips are somewhat salvageable, but yeah, if it's not doing what you want it to do, you need to be, you need to get a replacement. You need to have something there. Um, is this going to convince you to go AMD? Perhaps. Uh, I just built uh, a little rig for my sister because she needed a big upgrade coming from an Intel third, third gen. We're about to have third gen again next year. That's how long it's been. Um, 
So we gave her a, a 7600, like a Ryzen 7600. And um, it's not been the smoothest, but I'll talk about that later because I think I've been rambling. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm like, man, you know, I don't want to dive too much more into this game because, uh, you know, that's another two hours of game, but I'm not going to stay up too long. So anyway, with that, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this stream or you didn't enjoy this stream or you're lukewarm, I don't know. Or if you're just unopinionated or you think my takes are controversial or you think my takes are not controversial enough. There's lots of things. You can follow on Twitch. You'll see uh, I, guess I do a stream alert basically every 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on a Monday. Just that. One day a week. <laughs> That's all you need of me. Um, if you missed part of this VOD, uh, then uh, you, know, you can look on YouTube. It'll be there pretty soon. If you miss any of the VODs, you won't find them on Twitch because Twitch keeps deleting them. Go on YouTube. You'll find virtually every video I've ever done. Oh my gosh. They're pretty much all there. Um, so yeah, that's all good. Uh, if you want to see some insane ramblings as well, you can follow me on Paroma, uh, m.bando.com. I say silly things sometimes. Um, so that's about it. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So anyways, stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late. Don't say controversial stuff on Twitter. Or do. Don't get too riled up about Twitter. Twitter's not a real place. It's not representative of really, like, people as a whole. Some people are silly there, but eh, <laughs> it's Twitter. So anyways, peace people.